Back in February, in the dead cold of winter, myself and some friends decided to put together a trip for later this summer. We were finally going to go to Glacier National Park. I had never been before, and it's been something I've wanted to do forever. So now was finally the time to get up there, go do some amazing hikes with friends, see the amazing wildlife, and hey, maybe even go out in a boat. It was finally time to go to Glacier National Park for the first time. Greetings. It is Sunday night, uh, Sunday evening, uh, August 8th. I am packing because tomorrow morning I am hopping on a plane to go to Kalispell, Montana and spend four days in Glacier National Park. So, um, I'm very excited about the trip, obviously. I have not got out to do photography this summer, hardly at all. Um, a lot of it's been because of busy work schedule. A lot of it's been because of just bad timing. Um, I have not been up to the cabin in Granby yet this summer. Again, a lot of that's just bad timing and a busy work schedule. And now that we're, you know, somewhat getting back to uh, able to do like normal activities like one would do in the summer, like going to concerts and going out more often with friends, um, I've been doing a lot of that. And I have been playing tennis um, probably usually two to three nights a week. Um, so that has been really awesome. I have fallen in love with tennis again. And uh, <laughs> gotta admit, my game is pretty pretty sharp right now. So um, yeah, but anyway, so this trip is gonna be amazing. Um, I'm definitely excited to get up there and do some hiking and get some awesome photography. Um, of course, I'm going to be doing some landscape stuff up there just because all the glaciers and all the lakes up there and the hikes just amazing, but um, of course, I will put my focus to doing lots of wildlife stuff too. Um, my hope uh, is for some wolves. Um, it's They're up there, but it's a long shot. Um, I, it's definitely not as good a chance as like you would have like in Yellowstone, um, but they're there and there is a chance. And I have researched kind of some, quote, hot spots. <laughs> so we're going to give that a shot. Um, lots of bighorn sheep up there, grizzlies, lots of moose, uh, mountain goats, elk, even wolverines up there. Um, again, that's a long shot. Um, I will definitely be keeping my eye out for owls as well. So um, I'm hoping to go up there and just, I'm, I'm trying to not set like too much of an expectation about what I want to see, like I did with Yellowstone last year. Like I had a checklist of things that I'm like, I want to see, you know. So this year um, on this trip, I'm going to kind of just um, know where to go to see certain things, but whatever happens, happens, and what we see is what we see. So anyways, um, yeah, I will update again once I get up to Kalispell. And uh, yeah, we'll start this awesome four-day journey. And uh, yeah, I'm very excited. All right, well, I am here in uh, Hungry Horse, Montana, which is about 10 to 15 minutes um, away from the west entrance of Glacier National Park. So I got in yesterday and uh, got my rental car, which is a three-row minivan. <laughs> they said they were out of compact cars, and this is what they had left, so I was like, all right, I guess I'm rolling in a three-row minivan. And then uh, I got here to uh, the lodge that I'm staying at. This is my little room. Uh, it's literally just a bed and a bathroom. And that's perfect for me. Um, and then, yeah, last night, just caught up with everyone. There's a big group of us up here that have all come from different places. And uh, so, yeah, we just had a nice dinner together and had some cocktails. <laughs> And uh, we were going to go into the park last night to do maybe some sunset photography near uh, Lake Mc or McDonald Lake, um, but it was really overcast last night, and like I said, we were all just hanging out, having fun, uh, drinking. So, <laughs> um, so today uh, it's the next day, um, and today is a big day. We are going to go uh, going to the Sun Road. We are going to go all the way up to the top by Logan's Pass. And um, then we are actually going to leave the park 
and then go north and come back into the other entrance to get to the mini glacier area. Um, so that is going to be, uh, it's about two and a half hours away. So it's going to be a little bit of a haul. Then there's some hikes up there where there's a good chance to see um, bears and bighorn sheep and, uh, you know, the whole, the full gamut of uh, what can be found here in Glacier. So that is the plan for today. And uh, yeah, I'm just kind of waiting for everyone to show up and we're going to get on the road. Well, we are here at a little moose jam. He is, she is, over across the river here. Right over that way. Okay, we are going up the uh, going to the Sun Road here in Glacier, and uh, we are like I said, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not particularly fond of heights. I can handle it, but it's not my favorite thing in the world. And we are at a spot right now where it's just massive. Um, let me turn the camera around. So it's just like knowing that we have to go all the way, <laughs> all the way up there. And the view down, it's going to be hard to see with this camera, but uh, it is, uh, it's down. <laughs> so anyways, we're going to continue climbing. Alright, uh, a little bit of an unfortunate uh, update to make here. Um, Today was going to be the day that we were going to go do some hiking over by the town of, or the little area called Mini Glacier, and um, it has sort of become kind of a disaster. <laughs> it is a difficult place to get to from where we were staying. Um, it's like if you just went straight there, it's like a two and a half hour drive. Um, but of course, we stopped along the way and saw a bunch of sites and stuff like that. So it's taken us a little bit longer. So we finally got around to where you kind of re-enter into the park. There's a long line of cars, just nobody, no one's moving, and we see a lot of people just turning around. And I'm just like, man, why are people turning around? Like, you've already come this far. Like, <laughs> So we finally get up to the gate, and the park ranger says, yeah, the park is at capacity. So we are legally not allowed to let anyone else in. If you want to go somewhere and wait and see if we reopen, it could be one to two hours. So we've already, it's already taken us half the day just to get here. So um, yeah, we're like, we're not doing that. So 
um, we are flipped around and we are heading back now. So um, I guess that just gives us opportunity to stop at some other things on the way back that we didn't stop at before. And, uh, yeah, but pretty disappointing. Um, yeah, it's just, yeah, it's pretty disappointing. I drive, it's, it just sucks to drive all the way over here and then just get turned away. It sucks. And plus, we haven't eaten. <laughs> we were really counting on getting into Mini Glacier to actually eat lunch. So, um, yeah, it sucks. <laughs> Right. Well, I am back at the room after spending all day in the park, and I'm sure in the vlog I just gave a little description of what happened uh, to us trying to get in on the east side of the park, and we were turned away, um, which is frustrating. And uh, you know, again, I, I, I'm frustrated mostly at the fact that you know we we woke up early in June, you know, months ago, and 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 got these tickets, these passes to ensure that this wouldn't have happened, but it still did. We still got turned away anyway. Um, I'm, I'm mostly over it, <laughs> but, um, and it, it did help that all the other stuff we saw today was really great. And um, going up that road, the going to the sun road is, uh, man, it is, it is, uh, you're on some cliffs, I'll just put it that way. <laughs> but some of, the, some of the views up there and the landscape stuff that I got is just, it's, man, it is, it's great. So I think my landscape photos are going to turn out really good. Um, we did see bighorns today. Um, we saw a bear um, who was down under these bushes getting berries. So he didn't have any visual on him because we were kind of up above looking down into this little field. And you would see the bush like kind of rustle. So you knew he was there like grabbing berries. And then it would kind of go quiet for a minute. And then all of a sudden a different bush would like rustle and you're like, oh, he's over there. And it's like, was he ever going to poke his head up? And, you know, I kind of just pointed my lens to, towards where I thought he was and, and just basically started ripping shots. And I, so I, I, I have not actually looked at those photos yet. So as of this recording, I don't know if I actually got shots of the bear or not. Um, so we'll see on that. Um, I suppose if I did, you'll see a photo here soon. Um, but, you know, uh, and then seeing moose twice was cool. And... Uh, the Bighorns were up at Logan Pass, right next to the Visitor Center. So it's funny, we're driving up there, looking at all these cliff sides, and, you know, I was telling the people in the car, I was like, yeah, Bighorns are really hard to spot because they blend in really well, and look at the look at the bottom of the cliffs because they like to go down there and sit throughout the day, and, you know, they're, they're, but they're really hard to see. And um, turns out they were sitting in the grass right next to the Visitor Center <laughs> up at Logan Pass. Um, we had gone into the uh, gift store, or the gift store, and I bought like a t-shirt, and we were walking out, and this lady just overheard her say, she's like, oh, the sheep are over there, and I'm like, say what? And uh, yeah, there they were, so that was cool, um, definitely helped make the mood a little bit better after what happened to us, so, uh, but anyways, I am back at the hotel now, or the little lodge, and uh, I don't think anything else tonight is happening, so, um, it's gonna get some good night's sleep and uh, we will be back in the park tomorrow. So it's gonna be cool. Good morning. Uh, it is Wednesday and uh, I just got out of the shower. Had a very good night's sleep. Um, yeah, did not want to get up this morning. Uh, and it's not that early, it's like 8.15 and I still didn't want to get up. But uh, we have plans today. This will be like kind of my last full day to spend like in the park. So I think what we're going to do is um, try to avoid the crowds that kind of um, ruined yesterday. <laughs> Didn't ruin, but uh, caused problems. So I think we're going to go over by McDonald Lake, and they have a place where you can rent boats. 
So we are going to rent a boat and <laughs> go out on the lake. Um, and when I say rent a boat, um, boat is not like some sort of like like speed boat or anything that you would expect. It's really like a little like metal like canoe <laughs> with a little outboard motor on the back of it, and you just you just kind of putts across the, the water. <laughs> so we're going to do that this morning because the weather's really nice. And, um, you know, a bunch of people want to do it. So I'm, hey, I'm very agreeable. I will go along and I will go right on the boat. <laughs> but then um, we're going to do some hiking today, um, sort of on the west side here, so that we don't have to try to get three hours away and then get turned away. And <laughs> I swear I'm over it. I know it doesn't sound like I'm over it, but I'm, I'm, I'm mostly over it. Um, but so we're going to try to do some hiking today and then of course, um, we'll be hiking sort of near where we saw the moose and the bear yesterday. So, um, I'm going to have all cameras ready to go and, um, yeah, just finally get out there and get some hiking. Um, I need it because I had to sit in a car all day. So yesterday, so I'm, I'm feeling not active lately. So, uh, we'll change that today. And then, um, tonight... I might head back into the park by myself to do some wildlife stuff because um, I've got to hop on a flight to go home tomorrow morning. So today is definitely the last hurrah for me. So um, anyways, yeah, that's kind of my my plan for the day. And um, yeah, we're going to head out the door here pretty soon to go see about renting a boat, <laughs> which, will be, which will be fun. So I will update again once we're, once we're on the boat and out at sea. <laughs> so... Um, yeah, but that is our plan for today. The southwest corner of this lake, uh, that's where it drains out of. Stay away from that area. Don't want you going down the creek. As you move up along the coastline, there are buoyed off areas. Always stay outside of buoyed areas. In the northwest corner of the southern bay, where I'm pointing to right now on my right hand, there are some yellow sirens on trees, which indicate a bald eagle's nest. If you do head over in that direction, just maintain a healthy, respectful distance. Don't include too much on their territory, okay? Um, be as mindful as possible in this loud crowd. We're trying to go down there. All right, well, I am back in the uh, hotel room. This is the night before uh, I head back in the morning, and uh, we all just went out to try to photograph the uh, Perseid meteor shower. And that was gonna, I was hoping that was gonna be like my big surprise 
ending um, to be like, oh yeah, him, we went out and got meteors, but uh, that did not happen tonight. Uh, we did see them. We saw a few, but nothing that I got any photographs of. Um, it's it's only about 1030, and ideally to see those meteors, you want to be out around you know midnight and later. Um, but all of us have early flights or travel plans in the morning, so we just can't be out late tonight. So that was unfortunate, but um, the day was still good today. Um, we got out and it again, stayed on sort of the west side of the park. So we just didn't want to deal with all the traffic and everything. So um, we did the boat trip, which was really cool, on uh, Lake McDonald. And then went back around to the shore of Lake McDonald and got some cool beach shots there. And then um, just kind of messed around the Flathead River, uh, which is cool. Uh, no real wildlife stuff today, unfortunately, but... Um, it was a chill day and again got to enjoy the park and got to do some really cool stuff so i'm happy about it and uh yeah but now i gotta get packed up tonight because i've got an early flight back to denver tomorrow morning so um yeah it's been an awesome trip and i'm sure i will put kind of a wrap up uh sort of ending here on the at the end of the of the vlog to just kind of give my overall thoughts but right now it's mostly positive um, there's been some frustrations, but overall, it's been good, and it's been nice to get away. So, anyways, um, that's it from here in Glacier. Right. Well, let's talk about this trip. Now, first off, here's my uh, awesome shirt that I got from the gift shop. I like it a lot. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, let's talk about... Uh, some of the things in the video, um, just wanted to do kind of a behind the scenes. Um, I know the elephant in the room is going to be uh, about um, how frustrating it was to get turned away from, at the gate. Um, we can definitely talk about that. Because um, there was a few things I didn't mention in the video that also just sort of added more like insult to injury. And um, I would say one thing that if, if you were going up to this park, to be aware of is on the park website it will have all of the places where there's road construction going on um, and there was a lot of road construction going on uh, when we tried to go in from bat which is that little town um, right outside the east entrance of the park it's this little gravel two-lane road that goes towards the, the east entrance and they were doing construction on that so when we got a little bit in, um, we had to stop and they were just doing a like a pilot car where you had to wait in a big long line and then the pilot car would take you on the other side and then it would bring people back the other way and um, they said you could wait up to 40 minutes. Um, we had to wait about 30 minutes um, and what was particularly frustrating was we did that wait in this big long line of cars and then they drove us to the gate to just say, oh, you can't come in. <laughs> so I was like, oh, man, why? why? I just feel like they could have done a better job. Like, if you had told us while we were waiting in the big, long line, hey, don't bother waiting here because you're not going to get in. Then, I mean, it just would have saved everyone a hard time or uh, just would have saved everyone time. And then um, the final insult... Uh, of that whole situation was then we finally gave up that we were getting in so we turned around and guess what we had to do we had to wait for the pilot car for another 35 minutes to take us back the other way so it just it just was such a waste of time and um, again it like what really burns me um, about it is that um, we had booked this vacation in February we had jumped through all of their hoops where you have to have all these different passes and you have to log on in June at 7 a.m. and book this pass or else you won't be able to get in in August. And so we did that. Um, all of us, not, not a single person in our, in our group didn't do that. Um, you know, we were not, we weren't trying to cheat the system. We weren't trying to find a loophole. Like we did, we played the game and you know plan this vacation you know six seven months out in advance to get here and then still be turned away was uh um yeah i i think i mentioned in the video at some point i was like yeah i'm, I'm over it uh i'm not um i'm still not happy about it 
um, as you can tell, I'm sure. <laughs> and um, yeah, it was just, um, I mean, that, that, again, it didn't ruin my day, um, but it affected a large portion of my day because um, that was the day we were all going to go hiking. And um, my other my other group of friends that were in a different car, they were like 20 minutes ahead of us and they waited in the pilot car line. And then when they got to the gate, um, there was no one there. There were no even rangers, even at the little window. Like they just drove right in. There was no checking for passes. There was no checking for the second pass. Um, and then we were in that next train of cars to come through the construction. And that was when they decided to shut it down. So um, I'm happy at least a couple of my friends got to go in and do the hike that we wanted to do. Um, and you know, the rest of that day was, was fine. And the going to the sun road is awesome. And you're just some of those cliffs you're driving down and the road gets really narrow and it's two way of course. And, um, when you're passing somebody and it's kind of tight, um, <laughs> I was telling my friend Carl, I was like, dude, just, just, just keep us on the road. <laughs> And, uh, yeah, so that was, that was pretty cool. Um, but yeah, also, um, you know, the next day, um, which was Wednesday was the day that we kind of had a more chill day. Um, you might've noticed in my little, um, intro to that day that I was sort of laughing or was maybe a little skeptical about the boat ride. Um, the reason is, uh, the night before when we were coming home, we drove right by Lake McDonald. And I looked out there, and it, it was windy that afternoon. And I looked out there on the lake, and there was nobody out there except three guys in one of those boats that we were going to rent the next day. And uh, the, there were white caps on the lake because it was so windy. And I see these three guys in this boat just really struggling <laughs> to just make any sort of headway. And you see all these waves splashing up onto them, and they just look freezing and they they in that moment i would say those three guys out on that little boat were not having a good time and i was thinking as we drove by i was like oh god i hope that's not what we're doing tomorrow <laughs> it turns out yes it was and so i was like oh god i was like well i i'm still gonna go and i'm still gonna smile and i'm still going to to you know put my best foot forward, but I was a little skeptical about how the boat thing was going to go because I saw those guys the night before and I was just like, oh man. I was like, well, but then fortunately, the next day when we went, there was no wind. It was beautiful. Even some of the haze had gone away and it actually ended up being one of my favorite parts of the trip. It was a great idea. Um, I was happy that my skepticism about it did not <laughs> come true and yeah it was really incredible um michael's uncle captained the boat and uh yeah we just had a blast it was so much fun so that was a really good uh that was a really good moment from the trip and uh you know overall the um the landscape stuff that i did i was happy about um you know way up by logan pass some of those shots I put in there kind of towards the end of the day one, uh, right before the bighorn sheep, um, I think were my favorite shots. It was, it was pretty hazy. So I had to do a lot of dehazing in the, uh, in post-processing in uh, Lightroom to kind of clean them up, to make them look more like, you know, you know, just make them look good. <laughs> um, I mean the original, sh I'll post an original compared to my edited so you can just see um, I think everything's pretty true, except for the haze, which I had to really, you know, do a lot of dehazing. Um, but I'm happy with how that came out. And then on the wildlife front, um, the first day we we did we saw moose twice. Uh, we saw the little black bear that was down in the berry bushes that we couldn't see. Occasionally, when he would poke up and grab some more berries, and the bushes would like kind of move around. You could maybe get a glimpse of like an ear or, you know, he was he was hard to see and it was definitely not, it was not good for photographs. Um, I, I looked through all my photographs and you were zooming in on them to see, I'm like, and I see like an eyeball in there and nah, there was nothing. 
So, um, but then when he finally walked off, he was way back, and you could see him just kind of hop off into the forest. And uh, he was tiny; he was a he was teeny. Um, but still, that was cool um, to know that there was a a bear like close <laughs> eating berries. And uh, yeah, that was cool. And you know, one of the things was um, when I first got into the lodge. Um, you know, the guy working there had, you know, was very knowledgeable about the park and he had all sorts of maps and he was like, yeah, if you need to know any good recommendations, you know, just let me know. I know kind of all the cool spots to go. And I was like, well, I'm actually looking to hopefully photograph some wolves. And do you know, has there been any sightings recently or anything like that? And he said, I have not heard of any wolf sightings so far this summer. He's like, I, he's like, they're around here. They, they definitely have territory up here, but I haven't heard a peep about wolves all summer. So I knew that seeing wolves was probably <laughs> not going to happen. And one of the areas where they had been sighted, um, which goes up, you go into the park, and instead of going down the, going to the Sun Road, you actually go up north, um, was also closed due to construction. So that was a, another, a whole other area of the park that we couldn't get to, um, which again was kind of a bummer. Um, but uh, you know, the other thing about the wildlife is like, um, when you go to a place like Yellowstone or when you go to Grand Teton or even Rocky Mountain National Park here, um, there's known sort of hot spots of where you can see particular wildlife. Like, oh, and all the meadows down over on the Grand Lake side, there's tons of moose and elk. and. But if you go up over here, you know, into Alpine, that's where bighorn sheep are. Like, if you want to see something, you can kind of at least narrow it down and go to, you know, areas. Um, and again, with Yellowstone, it's like, oh, Lamar Valley, that's where you can see wolves. And, um, you know, like West Yellowstone has got a big herd of elk. And um, with Glacier, there's not really hot spots per se. Like, all the wildlife can just really be anywhere in the park. There's not real, like, um, you know, hot spots per se. So um, that's why it was tough to sort of plan out doing a wildlife part of the trip. Um, really, it was more just like, hey, we're just going to drive through the park, and if we see something, great. Um, and, you know, we did that first day. We, we Again, we saw moose and bighorns um, and one bear, uh, which was cool. But... Um, Anyways, I guess that's sort of my overall reactions. Um, I, if you want my recommendation about Glacier National Park, it's something that you should absolutely do. I just wouldn't do it right now. Um, I would wait a couple of years and make sure we get through um, the pandemic. I know we're, I know this summer things have opened up a little bit more. But they're still very short-staffed over there, and a lot of the like restaurants and shops within the park aren't are not open. Um, I don't I don't know if that's because of COVID or if that's just because of staffing, or I'm sure that's actually related. Um, but uh, and the the ticketing system with the reservations and for one entrance you need two different passes, but in another entrance you only need one pass and. Well, how do you get those passes? And what do you mean I had to log into some other website three months ago? Like what? It was, it's just, it's too confusing. Um, so I would wait. I like, I like the idea of a reservation system to keep the crowds down. Um, but it, it needs to be streamlined and it needs to be less confusing. So I, I, I am sure that they have probably learned a lot of lessons this year about it. So hopefully going forward, um, they will come up with a better system and a better way to um, actually let the people in who are supposed to be in and the people who didn't get the passes don't get to go in. Um, so maybe within a year or two, they can iron that system out better. Um, so I guess that would be my recommendation is you should definitely go. I just wouldn't go right now. I would, I would give it a year or two um, just to see if they can iron the system out a little bit better. So anyways, that's my final thoughts. Um, I would like to go again. I'm just not in any hurry to. 
Um, I'm glad I went. The stuff that I was able to see was spectacular. Um, I had a lot of fun. Um, overall, like I said, there were some frustrating parts of the trip, but overall it was great. I still had a good time. I would, anytime I can get out um, and go do photography with friends and have barbecues at night and drink beers and go hiking, you know, hey, it's all good in my book. So that's really, I think, what matters. So, um, yeah, you should do it. Just try 2024. <laughs> so anyways, cool. Thanks for watching the video. And uh, yeah, hopefully I will be getting back out to do some more photography this summer and hopefully another vlog. So thanks for watching. Thank you.